Where was the the conversation that uh, LeBron had with his son on the bench, uh, courtesy of TNT, before they uh, checked into the game? Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see the intensity, right? You just play carefree, though. Don't worry about mistakes. Just go out and play hard. That do anything for you? No, not at all. Yeah. He Me could neither. have been talking to anybody else on the team. No. Now, it, it's better with video because you are literally watching a father-son moment play out, but just listening to it for sure. He didn't say anything insightful. He's just as being comforting to his son as he's about to make his NBA debut. And then here it was. They, they, they join in, and uh, four minutes left in the second quarter, LeBron and Bronny check in at the same time. And what proceeds to happen for the next two and a half, three minutes – because that was all Bronny played, he then checked out before the Lakers ran away with this thing, is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Somewhere in there, there was a LeBron dunk, which was fun and thrilling, but we've seen that a bunch of times. It also didn't come uh, on an assist from Bronny James. And then also, Bronny had not one but two chances to make his first NBA bucket, which would have sent that crowd into a roar, and it also would have been the moment that we would be replaying over and over again for the next week because it would have been monumental that – Ronnie was able to capitalize when the moment was that bright, when it was that big with all eyes on him. And we don't know when the next time he'll actually suit up in a Lakers uniform is. It's likely he'll be in the G League. So he had this one chance. It was uh, on the right wing. On the right wing, he had a pull-up three-pointer. I believe it was off of a LeBron pass. So we would have had a LeBron, who's the all-time leading scorer in the league. I believe he's going to be the all-time leading assister soon, if he hadn't already got there, passing it to his son, Bronny. And the three-pointer was right there. And as he rose up for the shot, I'm, in this, I'm like, here it is. This is the moment. I was excited. All of the hype and the buildup that we have been talking about from the summer, really since last year, it was all culminating in this one shot from Bronny. He hits this shot. He don't got to do nothing else right for the rest of the year. Really, the next couple of years, the deal is done. He's done what he, his part in knocking down a jumper and creating this moment for fans to live on. And Bronny went short off the rim. It reminded me of the Jimmy Butler shot. It reminded me of the Jimmy Butler shot uh, in Eastern Conference Finals Game 7 against the Celtics that uh, would have got the heat to the finals, but instead it was short and it was deflating because I was that anticipatory of it. I was oh, 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 no. He so missed the moment. The reason why the moment wasn't that good was because Bronny Jr. wasn't good he's, enough to make that he shot. He sold. And that kind of is the entire encapsulating problem with the situation. He's good enough to make the shot, though, is the problem. If he wasn't, like, it, he can shoot. He can make that shot. He can I make know. that shot in his sleep. He can make it in practice. All He missed it, though. And that's why, to me, LeBron and Bronny debut, like, as much as I anticipated it, as much as I would have loved for it to be great, it was anticlimactic. But that's the whole microcosm of the situation where this is not a father-son achievement in any sense of the word. This is a father achievement. This is a father achievement. This is not Ken Griffey Sr. and Ken Griffey Jr. in any sense of the word. I'm actually disappointed in that duo for going to this game. You're mad at the Griffeys? They must have gotten paid a talent fee or something. But they were on behalf of Nike. I think Uh, they wanted to be there, though. It's lame as hell because Ken Griffey Jr. deserved it, earned it, and became one of the greater hitters that you've ever seen. Bronny James Jr., just happened to be the no. spawn of the greatest basketball player this era has seen. Here's where I'll push back on that. Here's where I'll push back. I'm not saying Bronny would have made it to the NBA on his talent alone, but Bronny didn't have to pick up a basketball. He didn't have to practice all of the hours of the day that he has. He didn't have to train the way that he's done with his body. And he also he also didn't have to put that kind of pressure on himself knowing that his life was made for him. We see so many kids of either celebrities or business owners or famous basketball and football players who rest on their laurels and don't live up to the hype. We've also seen literally kids who are good enough at basketball to maybe play in college but never had any kind of prospects on the pros. Bronny's good enough to put on an NBA uniform. (laughs) He is. (laughs) He literally is. I don't think so. He had a stop on Anthony Edwards. It was pretty good. nice. Way to go. I'm going to frame that picture right there. Why is, there, why is there so much pushback? He's the, he's like the 14th or 15th guy on the roster. He'll be in the G League uh, for probably the rest of the year, and he'll have his shot again to get back on the court when he's ready. But I don't understand all the pushback. Special treatment. Behind, what special treatment? 
what is it, four years guaranteed? Yeah. You hear someone who's a borderline, uh, not draftable guy get something like that? I don't think so. You know what he has promise? And you want to know why he has promise? He has the best mentor you could possibly have, and that is the best basketball player left on this planet that is actively playing with the amount of knowledge, genius, and also the genes that LeBron has. I'm betting on the genes at that point. Hey, you're a proponent for this. Just because you might be the greatest of all time at doing something does not mean that you were the greatest at coaching it, great yeah. at advising it. Uh, an example, Michael Jordan. Not really doing great things with the organization that he is running, and Terrible. you know he knows how to play the game better than anybody else. Has a good restaurant, though. So I don't understand how you can be stand idly by and not call this for what it is, a photo shoot. It's yeah, a power move. It is. And it's a LeBron James accomplishment for playing this long. That's the only thing it is. It's, wow, he's old, so old that his son is on the same team as him. That's what? the only accomplishment there is. That's why I'm mad at Bronny because he should have hit the shot. If he hits that shot, we're not saying this right now, but he opened the door for it because he went 0 for 2 in his three minutes and he didn't seal the deal. He's never going to get that moment back. I know he regrets the moment it left his fingers, he probably knew it was off, and I know he regrets it because he could have shut people like you up if he just drained the damn thing. Um, probably wouldn't shut me up. Why I'll not? Find, I'll find another thing to poke and prod at. So I don't understand. So here's the thing, too, with Bronny being on the Lakers, too. It's like it, I, they won the game. Lebr- it makes LeBron happy. It improves his mood. He's so he's so fixated on being a good father, and he's so which is a good thing. He's so fixated on the family unit and being there for his kids that. It is a positive for the Lakers organization and that team's chemistry and his own uh, personal gain on the court to have his son in the locker room with. It's a circus act. They should take this act to the big three. Be like, oh my gosh, the father-son duo on this three-man basketball team that Ice Cube owns? That would be cool. I would sign up for that, but not in where the adults play in the NBA. No, we've just, got guys who have trained their entire life, oh. have had a lot more adversity than LeBron James Jr. has had to get to where they are. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of them almost lost their life to a heart condition at eight, at 19. Low blow. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, that's that's real adversity. Life on the line. And here's Cat jumping on his uh, soapbox saying, get your ass out of my league. Get out of the association. There's other people working hard at it. Yeah, I think so. I think just because of your last name, that's why you're getting in on an NBA team, the dream for everybody who ever picks yeah. up a basketball, that's kind of cheap. It's weak. Hey, it is what it is because at the end of the day, I don't – and that's the only thing I don't understand too is why are there people like you and others that are out there that are more demonstrative about it that are it seem actually offended at the fact that one of the greatest players, one of the best arbiters for the game, one of the best ambassadors for basketball and the NBA – got a, a little bit of special treatment. I mean, we got Giannis out here with Thanasis on the court and in the locker room and whatnot because it makes him feel better. That's his brother, and he he stinks. Bronny's better than Thanasis. I He's bad at basketball, great at podcast. I would like to watch that one-on-one now. It's like, who's... Yeah, Bronny would cook Thanasis. Who's the real Nepo baby, even though it's brother <laughs> and brother and father and son? Bronny would absolutely cook the Nassus. Who deserves their roster spot less? Yeah. Head-to-head on TNT, the match. You know what? That would do numbers. Exactly. LeBron that would do and numbers. Giannis on the sidelines coaching up yes. their kin. Yes. The Nassus wouldn't even be able to dribble the ball three times with Bronny playing on ball defense on him. I don't know. Underneath the hoop, how, how tall is the Nassus? I've actually never watched him it, play. So <laughs> it, uh, yeah. He's like 6'8", six, 6'9". Eight, six, he's up okay. there. He's up there. He's big, but he's... A little uncoordinated. He's uh, unable to dribble the ball probably four times consecutively without it going off his foot. And I've seen his touch. It is, uh, dare I say, it, it rivals Rudy Gobert with how bad of touch he has around the rim. So I'm not, and again, nothing against the Nassis. Our teammate at Good Karma Brands runs a great podcast. Nothing you all should subscribe. Him. Nothing against uh, him. The analysis. Amazing podcaster. All, by the way, he's out for the season. He is somehow, I think, <laughs> some. He injured. He got injured somehow. I don't know when or where or how, but it was reported he is out for the season. 